And hello everyone, welcome to another vlog here on Red October Network. Glad to see you're still watching and listening and everything, so it's just really cool. And but I'm gonna talk about something today that is not cool. Um, as many of you probably have found out, um, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration stated that this was the hottest July on record since record keeping began uh, in uh, 1895 nationally. Now, I know that a lot of times with these YouTube videos, people get into these wildly, wildly uh, political, social, more political things about global warming. You know, you, get, you tend to get the bullshit bingo kind of things. And people always say, they talk about Michael Mann, or they talk about the hockey stick, or they talk about the hacked emails, they talk about Al Gore, George Soros, and whatnot. I'm not going to do that. I could if I wanted to. I went to Penn State and obviously studied a lot of that. We learned a lot about the, the uh, political things, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to look at it a little different. Um, first of all, uh, with this, as you know, a lot of the United States right now is under drought conditions. And so, um, with, with this, obviously, you know, with drought, it's really hard to grow crops. So that's one of the first things I wanted to talk about. Um, we really need to develop crops that are a little bit more resistant to heat and lack of moisture. Because I'll tell you this, no politicians differ on uh, politicians differ on how to spend money, but they don't necessarily agree, or they all agree, basically, that we cannot spend that much money. And when there's lack of crops, obviously, there's not as much food, there's not as much uh, cows, there's not as much cattle, there's not enough pigs, there's not enough grain. It's all interconnected. And so you have to think in these times where a lot of people are out of jobs, and we're talking about inflation, food inflation's been a big problem here in the United States. And you cannot deny the fact that there has been a significant raise in food prices, probably about 20 to 30 percent in the past 10 years. It's just amazing. And so this whole climate change thing goes right out of your pocket. It doesn't even matter if they want to do ta cap and trade or tax and cap and tax or any of that or put restrictions. The climate change is already affecting your pocketbook. So I think that's important. We need also to uh, take responsibility for what we are doing with this earth. It doesn't matter if, you know, if the hockey stick graph was right. It doesn't matter if, you know, all those hacked emails showed or exposed something. It really wasn't, it's really not a big thing. We still need to make sure that, uh, basically that we're responsible for what we do. We have abused the environment. I mean, we've changed it more than any natural effect probably could. I mean, carbon dioxide, obviously, we know carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. We know methane is a greenhouse gas. They are directly measurable. I don't agree with cap and, cap and tax, obviously. I, I think that we can find better ways, but I'm going to give you an example of what I actually think about. Um, and this goes with solar cells. Now, in 2004, I bought my first flash drive. It was $100. It was a Memorex. I don't. I wish I could find it. It's it's really a weird thing. You wouldn't believe it was only a gigabyte, but it was $100. But yeah, it was a gigabyte. Now, fast forward eight years, you can buy a 128 gigabyte uh, flash drive for $100 now. Now, my question is this. How, how can 
solar cells be only decreasing in price 10% where we've lost 99% of the cost for flash memory. And I've got to tell you, there's a lot of reasons, but you have to think about maybe what, what is the primary reason. And that is that it's who has the investment. People don't want to invest in solar cells. A lot of companies will go and they'll say to, to people, oh, we want to go and we want to find renewable forms of energy, but they really don't buy into it because if we all had solar cells on our roofs, then we would be in a modest amount of trouble and it, it would be uh, it would be an obvious uh, you know thing where if we could generate our own electricity there'd be an obvious deficit in the amount of uh, traditional fuels and traditional forms of power I mean I, I can tell you this right now from looking I mean solar cells I'm going to type it in right now. For 200 watts, it costs $408 for a 200 watt system. Imagine if it only costs like 10 bucks to hook up. I'm giving you four, what would be basically a 95% discount. I mean, imagine if you could hook up, you know, on a decent size through 4,000 watts of electricity, completely renewable, we could still go and we could still invest, we could still be hooked up to the grid, but think about during these peak times of electricity usage where we wouldn't have to have the blackouts, we wouldn't have to have the you know, rolling brownouts and everything. We could generate our own. I think there needs to be a little bit of investment. But anyways, back to climate change. There's a lot of stuff that really does affect climate change. I mean, ever one of the things that I always think of is civil unrest. It's not so much here in the United States or in Europe or in Canada or a lot of the first world countries. But we're only that way because if we can't grow the food here, we get it from somewhere else. And not everybody is benefiting from it. I often think about when I was with my friend Rod down in uh, uh, North Carolina, I saw the, a picture of a farmer. There was a steer and a, basically one of the old manual driven plows. And the guy had a, and he was digging up what looked like to be very, uh, plain soil, but he had a smile on his face. And I, I, I said to Rod, I said, why is that? And he said, because they know how to take care of the earth, they know what to do, and they, they live on what they have and they don't worry about what they don't. Rhetoric aside, you think about when people go and, you know, you're, you're, you're growing your crops, and all of a sudden, you know, this land which had been arable for, and you've been able to cultivate for thousands of years, suddenly becomes unusable. And they say, well, just move up the hill. Well, some places don't have a hill. Well, move towards fertile soil. What if it's a desert? See, we as Americans tend to take things like... I've been told several times that I should not care about the world because it's their fault they live in such dire straits. But did you ever bother to think that if you were to die today and you were given the opportunity to be born again, you'd only have a 10% chance, a 1 in 10 chance of being born here. You probably would have a 1 in 50 chance of going to college you would have probably a 1 in 8 chance of having a computer and being able to watch this video. We need to be stewards of the earth. We do, and it, it just bothers me that we see that there's been flooding in China, and there's desert expansion, and the ice caps are melting, but we'll say, we always use this famous George Carlin uh, quote that 
the earth is fine, the people are screwed. He used a little bit different of a word. But you really have to think about that because, you know, we can't just say, well, well God put the oil for, <laughs> in the soil for us to burn, as I was told once. We need to stop thinking about it politically because political ramifications are usually there to hide a truth. I can tell you right now that me personally, I like climate change. I do. Keeps me at work. Keeps food on my table, clothes on my back, money in the bank, gas in the car. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I studied, I did my work, and that was that. But I often think that one of the best things we can do here as a, 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 as a society, especially here in America, is that we can set those standards. And it doesn't necessarily have to be cap and trade. It can be something as little as just going and teaching people how to grow their own fruits. Teaching people how to grow their own crops, how to collect rainwater, how to deacidify it. Here in Pennsylvania, we have some of the most acidic rainfall in the world. And we have a pH which is, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.6 to 5, which is pretty acidic. It's like 50-50 uh, lemon juice and water. So that's pretty acidic. But I can tell you that if we are stewards of the earth, we can do great things here. We are sitting on the cusp of a lot of educated college students. A lot of them are in engineering, science fields, uh, math, engineering. Stuff we can all use to create great things for. We just have to think about, we have to put the political rhetoric aside. We have to stop thinking about who is going to rob us, because nobody's going to rob us. The politicians are going to rob us, Democrats and Republicans. They don't want you to think about that. They want you to sit there and just consume and spend money and put their butts in office. And it's really just something we have to realize. Because climate change, in effect, is going to occur and yeah, everybody says, oh, you called it global warming, and then there was cooling, and then... I gotta tell you something. Here's, here's the way I put the spin on it. If 99% of the doctors say... If 99% of the doctors in the world said, if you take that pill every day, you're gonna get cancer, you'd listen to them. If 99% of the civil engineers in this world said that bridge is gonna fall down if there's a truck that goes across it, You'd listen it to, you, or you would listen to them. Yet, 99% of climatologists are saying to you, we're having an effect on this earth. And they say, well, you're just trying to get money. Well, the pharmaceutical company does it too. I could argue from the pharmaceutical company that, you know, that we could, we could basically make more money off of providing cancer treatment rather than a cure for cancer. But that's a perverted idea. We should be able to go into solar cells. We should be able to develop new ways to provide electricity. The getting rid of the light bulb was redundant. You know, people were afraid about just things that they said they got a 50,000 foot warehouse full of 100 watt light bulbs. The light bulbs aren't the problem, it's the fact that we have people who leave computers on all night, like me. <laughs> I'm guilty, I'll admit. But in reality, our, our thought is with it is that we don't have to abandon oil, we don't have to abandon coal or natural gas. In fact, natural gas, I think, is a, a good step in the right direction. Because it makes us energy independent, it makes us responsible for our usage. And I'm not going to get into hydrofracking because that's a completely different thing and I frankly 
we'll make another video about that, but, uh, <laughs> but we need more environmental people in this world. We do. And they shouldn't be poked fun of. They're not hippies. They're not the Occupy protesters. They're not John Denver and David Crosby and James Taylor. A lot of them are just trying to earn a living. And they're important. We, like I said before, we can be stewards of this earth. We can be great. But we have to put some effort into it. So, anyways. That's all for now. Um, I don't know when I'm going to post next, but uh, we'll see. And sorry for the long video. hope you like it, and leave your comments. Adios.